ಅಜ್ಞಾನತಿಮಿರಾಂಧಸ್ಯಾಂಜನಶಲಾಕಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರೋನ್ಮೀಲಿತೇನ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ at the very outset <clears throat> i offer my pranams to most revered shrimad swami ranganathan ji maharaj in whose memory this nice gathering has been organized my humble pranams to revered swami girishanand ji maharaj my pranams to swami suparanand ji maharaj my namaskars to swami narasimhanand ji namaskars to shri kanorya ji anup gupta ji parlok mukherji and again my pranams to all the sadhus assembled here sanyasinis of sharada math and my namaskars and affection to all of you dear devotees <clears throat> i was just going through this book which was released a little while ago so just in the inside flap of this book you will find one beautiful statement here where we find Swami Ranganathanand ji very beautifully sums up the characteristics of spiritual growth in human life i think this is one of the finest presentation for us to understand what does it mean to be spiritually growing he says are you growing spiritually can you love others can you feel oneness with others have you peace within yourself and do you radiate it around you that is called spiritual growth what a beautiful presentation to understand what is spiritual growth in human life and then he says this kind of a spiritual growth can be attained by meditation inwardly and by work done in a spirit of service outwardly just like if you all remember what samiji has defined the very goal of human life in a small paragraph which comes in the beginning of his raja yoga where he says each soul is potentially divine the goal is to manifest this divinity by controlling nature internal and external do it either by work or worship psychic control or philosophy by one or more or all of them and be free this is the whole crux of religion everything else is a secondary detail just like in samaji's this presentation we find the entire gamut of spiritual realm presented within a few words similarly here we find swami ranganathanand ji in a few words he presents to us what is the meaning of spiritual growth and life and how are we going to accomplish it in our day to day life anyhow this just came to my attention so i felt that i should be pointing out this point to all of you about ranganathanand ji maharaj much has been told and much will be told for decades to come because he was one of the finest spiritual personalities which we had in the last century how do we evaluate him it's difficult 
India is the land of Vedas. The Indian culture and civilization is essentially the Vedic civilization, which is today known as Hindu Sanatana Dharma. And the core of Hindu Sanatana Dharma is Brahma Vidya, the great science of self realization, which the sages of the Vedas and the Upanishads kept before the entire world. And this great science of Atma Vidya, Brahma Vidya, has been coming down since the Hori past through a succession of teachers and disciples, which is known as a parampara, Guru Shishya parampara. <clears throat> if you go, go back to the Upanishads, from the Upanishads we come down to the great teachings of Bhagavan Shri Krishna in the Gita. You come down to Bhagavan Shri Shankaracharya's works, and then you come down to our own modern times, Shri Ramakrishna and Vivekananda, and this great parampara, unbroken parampara continues. In this great chain, Swami Ranganathanandaji is one link who came into existence in the last 20th century and has left a remarkable place in the spiritual realm. When I think about him, one thing which comes to my mind is one of the finest uh, descriptions of the characteristics of a guru. Sri Shankaracharya, in his, one of his works, he says, what are the characteristics of an ideal guru? He says beautifully in Sanskrit language, Shanta Mahanto Nivasanti Santo Vasantavat Loka Hitam Charanta Tirana Swayam Bhima Bhavarnavam Janan Ahetunan Anyana Pitarayanta. What does it mean? So beautifully, he says, Nivasanti Santo Shanta Mahanto. There are some magnanimous souls. The words are very beautiful. Some souls are by birth magnanimous. Magnanimity characterizes them so naturally and spontaneously. So there are some magnanimous souls. And what do they do? Vasantavat loka hitam charantah. They move around. And what do they do? Just like the spring season, when it comes, it makes the entire nature blossom. Similarly, these magnanimous souls, wherever they go, they make the spiritual hearts of people blossom. The very proximity of such people, such great gurus, makes our heart spiritually blossomed. And they themselves have crossed the ocean of the samsara and their now only passion is to help everybody cross this ocean of samsara. What a fine description of what an ideal guru is by Sri Shankaracharya. Whenever I think about Srimad Swami Ranganathanandaji Maharaj, I cannot imagine a better description of him than this one particular verse which describes who is an ideal guru. I will just narrate one small incident which had happened in my own life, in my interactions with Swami Ranganathanji Maharaj. There are many such instances, but because of the paucity of time, I think I should have, I should be limiting, limiting myself to this one incident. <clears throat> in 1998, Maharaj became the president of the great Ramakrishna order. And uh, at that time, I was a brahmachari in Advaita Ashram. And owing to my good karmas and good fortune, I got a chance to work on his books from 1998 to 2005, till he passed away, till this Mahasamadhi. During these seven years, 
I was fortunate to work upon many of the books which Advaita Ashrama published and which were Maharaja's books. So the first big manuscript which came to me at that time, it was, it was 1998 or 1999, was the universal message of Bhagavad Gita, which is today available in three volumes. And it's one of the very fast-selling books, very popular among the devotees, and it is highly prescribed that anyone who wants to understand Bhagavad Gita should read this Ranganathanji Maharaj's three volumes. A beautiful, very modern presentation of the great eternal wisdom. <clears throat> so that manuscript came to me. Before me, two other sadhus had gone through that manuscript. So my role was to give it a final shape and just to ensure that the book doesn't have any mistakes. So in the course of working on this book, I got ample opportunities to approach Maharaj and discuss with him the various aspects of it, wherever there was some lacuna, some mistakes, some possibilities of improving the manuscript. So all these things were going on and I got many opportunities to go and visit him and talk to him. And in every such interaction with him, one thing which was notable was, see I was just a brahmachari at that time. And he is the president of the worldwide, the great Ramakrishna order. The characteristic of this great personality was that same sightedness. That samadrishti which the Upanishads talk about. That vision of the one divinity in everybody. No one big, no one small. Dealing with everybody with the same sightedness. This we could see. Now, the manuscript was uh, checked and uh, finally the book went to the press and at that time my next, next task was <clears throat> to go and show him the cover of the book. You all may be knowing that the book has got the same cover even now, even after around 25 years of the publication of that book. That book has got the same cover. We haven't changed the cover. We went to Maharaj to show that cover. <clears throat> and Maharaj was very happy about it. But I had one question to him. I asked him, Maharaj, see behind the cover, behind every book, we put some text here. That is the usual practice. So I went to ask him, Ke, Maharaj, what should be the text that should go behind this book, the Gita? So the first thing he told that, here immediately he thought for two minutes and he asked his sevak to come. And he asked the sevak to bring this Kathamrit, the Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna. And he started turning the pages of Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna. And he came to a particular page and he told me, see, you put this, what Sri Ramakrishna tells about Gita. So Sri Ramakrishna, there is one conversation with Master Marshai where uh, Sri Ramakrishna is asking Master Masha, have you read Gita? He says, yes. Then Sri Ramakrishna himself says, Gita is the essence of all the scriptures. So, Ranganathanji Maharaj told me, you put this statement by Sri Ramakrishna on the backside of this book. This will be like a blessings of Sri Ramakrishna for this book. So, this was one thing. <clears throat> then came the second question. I wanted to know from Maharaj, which is the most important shloka of the Bhagavad Gita? See, we all have been reading Bhagavad Gita for, I, mean, I personally, I have been reading Bhagavad Gita even before joining. So, this is Bhagavad Gita is our favorite book. So, having read this book several times, this question was there in my mind, which shloka should we consider it to be the most important one? So I asked him, Maharaj, we want to put the most important shloka, which you think, that shloka we want to put it on the flap of this book. Again, Maharaj thought for a few moments and he said, and what he said was something very interesting and it was an eye-opener for me personally. 
So according to him, which is the most important shloka of Bhagavad Gita? He said, the 25th verse of the third chapter is the most important shloka of the Bhagavad Gita. This came as a totally a surprising thing for me. Now what is this 25th verse of the third chapter of Gita? It says, Sakta karmanya vidvansu yatha kurvanti bharata kuryad vidvan tatha sakta chikir shur loka sangraham What does it mean? The meaning of this verse is just like worldly people, people who are engaged with worldly activities they work intensely and passionately but they work with deep attachment similarly the wise person wise person means one who is atma vetta one who is a knower of the atman such knower of the atman also should work with the same passion and intensi intensity but without deta attachment and then comes the most important part why should he work Chikur Chikir Shur Loka Sangraham, it says. This Loka Sangraham word is the thing which actually the most important thing of the Bhagavad Gita. What does this Loka Sangraham mean? There Bhagavan Sri Shankaracharya comments. Lokasya Unmarga Pravritti Nivaranam Loka Sangraham. What is this Loka Sangraham? Loka Sangraham means preventing the human race from going astray, stopping them from going on the wrong path and helping them to come to the right path of spirituality. Just imagine. So, Swami Ranganathandi says that this is the most important thing with which we all have to be involved with. Constantly working to see to it that the human society doesn't go astray it doesn't go on the wrong path and helping the human society to come to the right path of spirituality because ultimately the well-being of the human society is in spirituality and spirituality alone so this came as a total surprise to me because we all have read Bhagavad Gita several times but never did it occur to us that this work this verse is so important now this is one side. So what Ranganathanji Maharaj is telling about this verse is one thing. But what do we find in his life? His life was the best demonstration of what this verse says in the Gita. What is that we, that we see in Ranganathanji Maharaj's life? A man who is established in truth. He could have spent his days in meditation and in silence. But just like Bhagavan Krishna says in the Gita that the wise man, the Atma Veta, the Atma Gyani, should be working with the same passion, with the same intensity with which the so-called worldly person works, the worldly person works with attachment, this wise person will work without attachment and he will be working for what? What is the motivation? The motivation is only one and one alone the well-being of the entire human race so this verse this statement came as an eye-opener and is also truly speaking now whatever my uh, earlier speakers presented before all of us about Swami Ranganathanji Maharaj in a way it sums up the whole uh, I should say what we find in this phenomenon called Swami Ranganathanandaji Maharaj that passion that maddening intensity with which he works, which we have seen and witnessed, and tireless, relentless, not knowing what rest is, and only one concern and one thought which would trouble his mind was, how should I remove the sufferings of the people? What can I do to the suffering world? What can I do to the suffering world is the one concern which moved the soul called Swami Ranganathanji Maharaj. Now this is the great characteristic which we find in all the great masters. We find it in Swami Vivekananda, same thing. That mad passion to bring succor to the suffering humanity. So this is the great thing which uh, 
Uh, I was fortunate to witness in my one of his interactions with this great soul. And we can go and uh, talk about him in different contexts. But as the time is not uh, sufficient here, I would uh, thank the organizers who have given me an opportunity to come and express my ideas about Maharaj. And this beautiful book has been brought out. I am sure this book will be a great source of inspiration for many. And many more people in the future, whoever gets connected with this Swami Rangnathanji Maharaj's works and his ideas, will be encouraged and inspired to walk on the path of spirituality, which is accomplished through meditation inwardly and through service done outwardly. Thank you so much.